What was your personality like as a child and what were some of your biggest inspirations? Um, so my personality as a child, I was very creative when I was young. I think my mom pushed me into being very creative. Um, she made us do like everything creati creatively. So I was always creative. Um, I was a bit of an introvert, but um, I think that changed a little bit when I got older. But most definitely the two ways you will describe me when I was younger was creative and an introvert. I think those two things definitely go hand in hand. When you're a creative person, you're constantly brainstorming and coming up with new concepts. So in turn, that can make you come across a bit more introverted, especially as you're focused on coming up with new ideas. Exactly, exactly. I agree with you. Um, I, I feel like also because I grew up in Tanzania and from what we all know, most we, we mostly associate Africa as a developing country. So I grew up in a place where I didn't have much resources. So I had to make the most of what I had. And I think that really ignited my creativity and it made me look into what I already had, what I, what I had around me to kind of like survive or just uh, make it day by day. For sure. It sounds like you really found your inspiration in the world around you, and that's partially what sparked your joy and creativity. In turn, do you think that's maybe what inspired you to start your blog and to just write about the world around you, the experiences you have through a very appreciative lens of the world being a beautiful place? Yeah, I, I agree with you. Well, the reason why I even started my blog was because I wanted to to share my experience and my adventures so i but i of course these days there are so many blogs and you just have to find a way a creative way to stand out or just find your niche and the people who who are more more interested in what you do as you as the way i do it myself as you started that journey who were some of your mentors and women who inspired you well, my mom has always been my inspiration and my mentor since day one. Uh, she's a, she's kind of like a free spirit herself. She's very um, she's she's also very creative, and she has always she she always she always found a way to um, succeed. And uh, from the beginning, she supported me, whatever I wanted to do, in as much as the many times I had to change what I wanted to do. Uh, she has always been there to, to guide me through, to, to lift me up, to encourage me. And I also, I feel like also the women in her life, like her sisters, played a very big role um, into mentoring me as well. That's so wonderful. It's amazing when you have a parent who's so supportive and really nurtures your dreams. Looking back, if there's any sort of advice you could ask your mother or the other women in your life, what would you ask them? Um, if I could go back in time and uh, ask my, my mother, of course, I would ask her to, to not keep any secrets I mean in as much as parents they want to protect you to make you feel safe and you know our world is so we're so based into just wanting to explore and and find and and um, just do things there were things that I felt like if she would have you she wouldn't have hid them from me at the time she would have just told me hey the world is a bad place okay <laughs> and she wouldn't have tried to sugarcoat it and you know make it look like um, everything was gonna be all right I'd preferred if she would she was a bit blunt with me in terms of disappointments in terms of failures in terms of um, like th just things that I wish I they were not kept as a secret that things that parents do keep as a secret that's so universal too I think oftentimes parents just want to protect you they want you to have a perfect life so they kind of just keep you in this bubble yeah looking forward to the future a little bit what are a few things that would really help you grow as your own business and your own brand in this moment because I'm just starting out, my blog, as you see, was something that I started out last year. So um, I just feel like I always need support, especially from 
from other from bigger businesses you know the moment you are seen as a tiny business or a small business or just starting out you really don't have the support that you need it's always good to to people to have faith in small in small brands like brands that are starting out and really look into the potential that uh, um like uh, like small brands like us can have rather than I don't know say right now we base so much on followings and but really I know a lot of people who are who are small they don't have much of a following but they really do have beautiful content they really are spreading the message in whatever industry they are in so really just the support of smaller brands and also um being colored as well i would put it out there um we all i also need we also need that support as well so i think for now i might say those are the two major things that are the most important for me it's just the recognition even when even as a small business and probably the exposure yeah yes exposure is key especially when growing a blog or social media business that's what it's all about do you have any background in studying marketing or business or did you just really take the initiative to be self-taught? Actually, so I do have a business I have a background in in business. So I did a, I majored in business and then I majored in fashion business for my masters. There was a slight career change, so as as time went by i re realized that i also really liked tourism so i decided to tap into that but yes i do have a business background that's awesome what was that experience like for you did you have any sort of mentorship or were you inspired by a particular course um i think it was just being in paris uh paris being the most beautiful city in the world i i've I and 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 at that same time I was working for a um a travel agency and so I guess just being in Paris and doing what I do um with the same people who had the same kind of mindset who were also passionate I think that's where I kind of started to to really understand and really take interest in that particular field but it's not that i i don't do fashion anymore i still i find a way to fuse in the two it's kind of like tour fashion meets tourism that's amazing that's one of the things that i love about your content it's not just fashion it's not just travel you truly incorporate the two worlds very seamlessly and it makes for absolutely stunning content that's very nice of you to say thanks <laughs> What are some of the brands you work with or some of the brands you would love to work with in the future? Um, for the moment, I, as I said, I'm still uh, just up and coming. So I've worked with a few brands and usually at the beginning, it's usually it's kind of like do it yourself. So you have to pitch yourself to brands and everything. But I've had a very good chance to work with for example uh tf and c london and i also right now work with anna luisa and honestly it's been just a dream i've never ever dreamt in my life to be approached by brands and hopefully in the future i hope to work with more brands in tourism in as much as also some other sustainable high-end brands at 130 m our values are based on ethics and sustainability Ability, particularly in industries such as fashion and tourism. So what does sustainability and being an ethical consumer mean to you? First and foremost, sustainability for me is more about preserving the climate and um, being conscious or being aware of how we impact the environment. And I've tried to incorporate that into my daily life and also right now um, we start to see the the wave or the change in different industries not only in fashion but also in tourism in my industry that which is tourism we see that there is a wave or there is a is a change uh, or a push to change especially in sustainability and um, this is usually in um, preserving the culture heritage of that particular place. I actually wanted to chat about this a bit more. I had the opportunity to do some research on the travel and tourism industry in Paris, 
And one thing I thought was so cool is they actually have hotels labeled as eco-friendly with a green key rating. They make note of what they're doing to preserve the surrounding environment, as well as what they're doing internally in terms of sustainability, which is so cool. I also learned some restaurants are utilizing imperfect or soon expiring produce that would otherwise be discarded from grocery stores. Yes, yes that's very popular right now. Yeah. Yes. So I think Paris is very innovative in terms of operating ethically and sustainably. And I think it's also um, one of the most uh, under pressure because we do receive a lot of tourists. There's a lot of visitors each and every year. Usually it just, it's so crowded. And when we come to talk about pollution and all these things and how that impacts the environment, yeah, it will just be very interesting to see the change and how the tourism industry takes all that into accountability. What is one piece of advice you would give to someone looking to start a business similar to yours? I would say, start don't think about the right time to start i just say go for it especially now i think the pandemic has kind of also shaken us up a little bit but it has it has it has kind of like um shed light into so much possible so much possibility especially in the travel industry and now more than ever i feel like people after being locked down for so long people are even more than eager to travel and just try different things so i feel like there hasn't there hasn't been a time as now for um to be in this industry especially now that we are connected there is so much possibilities of taking good content when you travel and also connecting with people so i say use this time now is the time to start don't wait for the pandemic to to kind of like <laughs> go down but i just say even if you're starting from your own hometown like where you live it's also it's also a very great time to start so don't wait for the perfect time i feel like now is the perfect time to start and looking back at your own journey are there things you would not do again or would you not change a thing and why not actually i wouldn't change a thing because i believe that everything um works for the good for the better and i believe everything that is that happens in your life or the journey that you have taken is is meant to happen to help to further assist you along the journey but i believe all the experiences that i had doing other things that were different have led me to the place that i am right now before we go do you have any words of wisdom for our viewers or readers words of wisdom mm. <laughs> um i think i have said a lot in the entire um video about not giving up or starting or not i'm um, waiting for the right time to start um, i think it's also important to know that um, we are all different we are all unique we all bring or contribute something um that no no one else can do so even in a time where things seem like it's a bit saturated and especially i keep telling myself this the especially the fact that i'm still i'm still a small blogger and i'm still growing that i have something unique to give out to the world and even though so many people are doing it, not everyone can do it the way I do it. So if, if you're watching this and this is something that you're passionate about, I feel like this will be something to, if this, can, if, if this could be um, something to help you, guide you, then just know that you are unique being you and that we need you to do what you can do the way you can do it. Those are definitely some wise words that I think everyone can take to heart no matter what path they're on in life. I just wanted to say thank you so much again victoria for interviewing with me for ethic magazine at 1 30 m thank you so much for having me it's been a great pleasure faith thank you